You guys have watched Dragon Ball Z, right? If you haven't, I'll basically try to compare the two shows I'm reviewing now in Dragon Ball Z with this exact moment that just embodies and summarizes the entire show. So in Dragon Ball Z, you have the main character protagonist Goku and his prodigy son, Gohan, fighting against the villain for the second arc of the entire show. Protagonist Goku is like, hey, Gohan, I weaken up the villain for you. Let me go ahead and show him how strong you are by giving him full strength. So Goku heals up the villain named Cell. And now Cell's fighting Gohan, his prodigy son, at full health. Now imagine that happened, right? Except Cell kills Gohan and destroys the Earth. That's basically the summary and description of Rise of Valkyrie. Just nothing goes right ever. What's up, guys? I'm in a 47. And welcome to Watch Plus. Got more content coming your way. Let me put on a shirt right quick shirt on editing was awful i know so we're talking about rise of valkyrie this series has three parts six episodes in total and after watching the first two episodes i now have a cow to milk and also a whole rant to go about at the end of the review pretty much because it because of how depraved the show is i didn't check the comments for this one i really should have i didn't check them this time but for sheer just absolute dread you feel from watching this entire series i put it up there at pigeon blood because you feel all the characters you feel where they're coming from because they have a decent build up for the backstory because basically valkyrie scold and freya are all three battle maidens or goddesses under odin's power and they're defending the earth and their own people by using that said power this wouldn't be the review i'd be reviewing if there wasn't a massive flaw in what their extensive powers are because their powers are basically superhuman strength ability speed everything involving the ability to have access to godly powers but the catch is they have to remain pure to retain this resilience and you like you, do i even have to explain like how <laughs> I don't even have to explain how like <laughs> backwards that is for like just two seconds. Like dude writing this must have been like, oh, oh, this is way this is lore. And then he just went straight into it. Now I don't know if that's exactly correct. Those goddesses guys of the time, because I do know that Valkyrie Frey and Skull are Norse gods or Norse figures that are heavily, you know, implicated in fighting for Odin or under Odin. So I know that's true, but I don't know if that's specifically true. He added it in there. But regardless, that's <laughs> wild basically we have freya she got caught here and once she got caught she was underneath the spell because once the seal of purity is broken upon their canal then they are basically a regular human woman and at that point they're just easy to manipulate because they're massive ogres with superhuman strength the ability to just duplicate i don't like why are there so many of these ogres dude what is going on like i <laughs> These ogres are like at least seven feet tall, 300, 300 pounds. It's just, it's insane. So once Freya gets caught, she gets captured, she gets manipulated. And now her goal is to capture the two other goddesses, battle maidens, to make the ogres have full control over the current population that is sort of surviving due to these battle maidens, right? Ogres caught Freya, which they have no names, by the way, which kind of fits because they're like nameless lumps of meat pulsating everywhere they have a vast majority of their people captivated as well and with freya as hostage she is able to via manipulation tell the ogres how to get our main character here valkyrie in the ropes basically what freya does strategically is tell them what to do but they don't really explicitly explain that i just assume that happens because in the middle of episode two and episode one she's basically going like hey you know we should go along with them i mean you were gonna have their children you know ogre and goddess children sounds great like so i'm assuming you know she gave him some hints and long story short she ended up getting captured she got like outnumbered while trying to fight them and bing bing boom she got captured and a mere session or two later she's now free of her powers again against her will and now that she's free of her powers the ogres are like hey you know what we want to humiliate you as far as we possibly can so we're going to get all of your people the people that you've been saving for your entire life you know because that's your job we're going to have all of them just run through you like a revolving door while you are chained in that beheading device have fun now this whole revolving door aesthetic for the whole village is very reminiscent of the one show I reviewed would 
which ended in them dying called Konoichi Botan. It's funny in a sense of like how wrong everything goes in that show and it's very similar to this one because nothing goes right for them at all and the one chance something does happen to have a glimpse of hope it gets absolutely shattered in one of the worst ways you possibly imagine. So now Valkyrie's captured, Freya's captured, and in the middle of episode one as well, they do mention there's another goddess that has similar powers to them, if not as stronger than them, called Skold. And she's red hair, you know, she's out there envisioning seeing them being captured, but she doesn't really experience it. And as she hears about it, she goes immediately to save them. And while she's out there at the compound, just whipping all this ogre, right? It's just, just having ogre steaks for dinner. Just destroying them, slicing them, filleting them, just going at it nonstop. I'm thinking like, yes. Okay, so this is the second episode. So at least she's going to save somebody, right? Please, for the love of God. Please. And then she faints in the middle of the jail cell, in the middle of their compound. So all those bodies she piled up was literally for no reason because she just fainted for exhaustion. And we find out why she fainted. She fainted because while in the woods, before she went and investigated and killed them, a random tentacle creature came and investigated her. And it finally just, engorged and took all of her stamina mid-fight and when she came to the tentacle monster just expelled itself out of her grew up with this massive behemoth pulsating skyscraper and just ether both of them and while all that's happening another tentacle parasitic sponge sea sponge think sea cucumber thingy attaches itself to valkyrie and freya and now they're all going at it together and at the end of the series they're all pregnant I Huh? What? <laughs> Bro, this show, man. This, Jesus Christ. And one thing, too, I didn't mention because you can take a wild guess, but they're so descriptive of everything that in every single session they possibly could have, it is literal. Every single time. Every single. You can't have one peaceful session. Even the one session where Skold was being held captive and Valkyrie now had the sh growing out of her orifice, even that was like the closest thing, but it was. It, 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 uh, bro, I want to say this is damn near pigeon blood, damn near euphoria, damn near Konouchi Botan, levels of depravity. If, if there was a show that was like the embodiment of depression, this would be the show right here. Like, it just truly would be. It, it probably would break some people if this was their first experience for a show on ironically also this as well as comparative to the dynamics of shiku kanajo those shows as well even the dynamics of dragon riders why not throw that in there it's just like these manipulative gaslighting stockholm syndrome nobody wins uh, evil villains always wins then third all that stuff just <laughs> i don't know what else to say <laughs> all right guys i'll have an outro but if i did wouldn't matter because it makes my video Good night. God damn, bro. God damn. Why is there so much blood? Why is there so much blood? Like, come on, man. Like, why? It's almost like they did research on this for no reason. Like, they, they were like, hmm, how much blood would excrete from someone's orifice if there was, let's say, uh, an item entering them that was about the size of their entire abdominal region? Like, why would they? <laughs> why? Uh. <laughs> help, help.